ready, boss? On Thursday morning, South Australia Police commenced planning as a result of a request made to us from the Northern Territory Police to send two deployments, each of 10 um, officers for a week in duration to Northern Territory to support the Northern Territory Police. The deployment of South Australia Police officers to other jurisdictions is nothing new. This is something that has occurred for many years. Examples over the last period of time have been the Christchurch earthquake, Chogham, and a number of other major police operations that have been conducted, so it's nothing new. As has been the case in all deployments, the officers are afforded the same paying conditions that they would be when they're here in South Australia, and in this case when they're going to Alice Springs. The 20 officers in this deployment will be paid by South Australia Police. The additional allowances, travel arrangements, mill will be paid for by Northern Territory Police. The first rotation of 10 officers is planned to leave Adelaide on Wednesday and then they'll be up there for a bit over a week and return the following Thursday, followed by the second deployment of the same number of 10 officers. It's significant to note this is nothing unusual. There's already been a number of South Australia police officers that are stationed in our far north areas that are already sworn in as Northern Territory police officers. So I can say that no current police operation is going to be impacted as a result of these two deployments of 10 officers each. What I can say is that the police commissioner did receive correspondence from the police association late yesterday and we committed to working through that and providing the police association with relevant information as we're getting that to hand with our Northern Territory colleagues in order to resolve this issue so that we can deploy the members from next Wednesday. I can also state that uh, a request was made for our state operations support branches with where the members come from for volunteers and we certainly had no problems in actually filling the two deployments. Our state operations support branch is an area who those members regularly deploy to any parts of the state, metro as well, uh, to assist with police operations and it's something that they regularly do. They're accustomed to travelling, they're accustomed to staying in different locations, often at short notice. Um, so it's no surprise whatsoever that they had no problems at all in filling these two deployments of members. I'm happy to take questions. So have, have they primarily come from the Far North LSA or, or no, no, other? No. But the reference to the Far North Local Service Area is just to say that members in Far North Local Service Area are also sworn in as uh, Northern Territory Police Officers. It happens with some of our other border jurisdictions as well. These officers on this deployment are from our State Operations Support Branch. They're an extra group of people that deploy to various operations, deploy to different parts of the state as the need arises. These 10 officers are not from our metropolitan police districts. They're not from our country, regional, local service areas. So they're our first responders, the people that, when you're calling triple zero, our first responders are the ones attending. This support branch people are not those. They're extras that deploy to different operations. Um, so there certainly would not be any uh, impact on our existing police operations for the two deployments that we're having, 10 officers each for a week at a time. What would this support branch usually be doing in their regular hours? Yeah, like for example, gather around this weekend, as an example, we'll be working for football, different events. Uh, they'll do different events and so forth. So next week, there's no gather around. Um, they're able to be deployed. There's a number of teams that they have. As said, this is a function that the State Operations Support Branch regularly do. Uh, not unusual for them to get a phone call, relatively short notice, to deploy to different parts of the state as the need might arise for specific operations. They might at times go to the Kangaroo Island for the Kangaroo Island Cup um, and a range of other events that occur. Tudorama when it used to occur, just as an example. So, so they're well and truly accustomed to, to packing their bag, travelling, getting their meal allowances um, and so forth and working in a different environment. That's often a reason as to why they're there because they enjoy that type of variety of work um, and it's no surprise that these members are keen to get to uh, Alice Springs for just a one week deployment and uh, experience um, and support our Northern Territory colleagues. Has this been strategically timed between big events like Live Golf is coming up obviously, we've got Gather Around this weekend, it's in between those? No, it's my understanding, as I said, the, my understanding is the request was made from Northern Territory Police to us late on Wednesday 
So we commenced planning early Thursday morning. So it's more likely to coincide with the end of Alice Springs curfew on Wednesday. That you'll have to raise those questions with Northern Territory Police in relation to why they made the request from us on Wednesday. The Police Association has said it's quite extraordinary that they found out about this through the media. I'm just sorry, wondering. Sorry. The Police Association have come to us and said it's quite extraordinary that they found about. Uh, found out about the deployment through the media. What, why didn't they get to The office? police commissioner has no obligation to consult with the police association in relation to operational deployment of members. We certainly are now committed to working with the police association to provide them with the information that they requested of us late yesterday, and we'll certainly do that by the timelines that they've given us. As I said, this is a very flexible, dynamic um, issue. As I said, the request was only made to us on Wednesday, we started planning Thursday morning. There's a lot of issues to work through with Northern Territory Police in relation to travel, getting up there, being sworn in, uniform, equipment and so forth. Um, so as we're getting those details, and our members from our emergency and major events section are working through this weekend, getting those details from our Northern Territory colleagues. And once we have that, we'll certainly um, committed to providing that information to the association to resolve this issue. Is there a chance the deployment could be extended beyond the two weeks? That's up to Northern Territory Police if they ask. So at the, we, they've asked for two two deployments of 10 members each, and that's what we're working towards. What, what timeline have um, the association given you in terms of giving them that advice? We'll provide it to them by the top, um, on Monday. Um, I believe it's about midday, so which we'll certainly, as soon as we get the information, we'll certainly provide it by that time. Do you, um, are any community constables involved? Not in this, um, not in the, the two, these two deployments. As I said, we went specifically to our state operations support branch members, um, knowing their flexibility and their ability to regularly deploy, um, and they don't have any community constable members at our state operations support branch. And just to clarify, you said they probably be paying their regular wage, but the additional costs of housing and support. Yeah, so co um, travel expenses, accommodation, meal allowances those sort of other miscellaneous type things, we'll, we'll invoice Northern Territory Police and they'll pay. But, but from a member's point of view, they'll get paid, they won't notice any difference. As if they were to be deploying to the far north or if they were to be deploying to Mount Gambia or, you know, I'm sure a number of these members probably have deployed interstate over the years for other operations. So from their point of view, um, there's no change. They'll still get paid each fortnight with their relevant allowances. So. Any members from the APY lens section travelling across the border at all? No. Uh, not, given, for this, not for this deployment. Given that part of the responses for the large influx of people from yeah. the APY lens to Alice Springs, yeah. is there any need for those officers to, to travel there given their local well, knowledge? Yeah. Well, this is another benefit of the State Operations Support Branch going because they also regularly travel and assist in the APY, so it would be no surprise for these two deployment of 10 members that they have experience in working in the AP Wildlands in any case. Um, so there wasn't a specific need to get AP Wildlands specific police. As I said, I'm sure of these 10, two groups of 10, um, if not all of them, I'm sure majority of them have worked up in the AP Wildlands previously, more recently. Okay, well, thank you. Thank you.